You're watching Throttle House, and this is a track test. Look at that! Welcome to the Throttle House Test Track, our very own corner of the earth where we can drag race and set lap times. I'm Thomas. And I'm James. And these are two of the hottest new American cars this year. And you might not think this makes much sense, except this is the Shelby GT500 without the carbon fiber track package. So not only do they cost about the same price, they're also on the exact same tire. The Shelby GT500, or as Carroll Shelby himself stated back when he made the original, the first real car he was really proud of. And after getting behind the wheel of one in its third and newest generation, it's easy to imagine why. Ford Performance has thrown everything they've got at it. A supercharged 760 horsepower, Magna Ride suspension, massive 16.5 inch two-piece rotor brakes, and even though this one doesn't have the full carbon fiber track package like the one we drove in California, it has the far cheaper handling package, which for 1500 bucks gives you adjustable strut top mounts and a gurney flap spoiler. Added together, today's example is a racing striped fortress of power and control that recognizes few equals. This is the new C8 Corvette, a completely redesigned, reworked, hunkered down American sports car with an exotic twist. And like the GT500, it is slightly upgraded from the base model with a package called the Z51, which means it not only has five extra horsepower and upgraded suspension, it also gets an electronic differential, meaning it does this with little fuss. But we'll get to that later. The important thing is that both of these cars are on fresh Michelin Pilot Sport 4Ss, and even though the Corvette has a bit less grunt at 495 horsepower, all other variables today are equal. So both the drag race and the lap times should be very interesting. Let's do it. And if you're new to Throttle House, we do car reviews, track tests, and quite a lot of messing about. So subscribe and hit the bell. Okay, I'm finally in the C8. <laughs> James kept stealing this car. It is my turn to win. Well, I think we're gonna find out, I guess, right? I'm actually reasonably confident. The only thing that's worrying me is I've got half a tank of fuel and I'm not sure if it's still gonna have any left by the time I get to the end of the quarter mile because no car drinks its fuel like the GT500. It makes it almost unusable. Okay, so you're going to go into track mode. Everything is as it should be. Here we go. Shot off. Oh, I'm gone. Bye bye. Come on, GT500. Okay, I'm gaining. I'm gaining, but not soon enough. Oh, that was close. Wow, those brakes. Wow, the brakes. Oh, the largest domestic sports coupe brakes you can buy. I had a tough launch there. Did you? Yeah, it was all over the place. Interestingly, I was gaining on you so hard at the end. I didn't feel like it. But the, you can't feel anything. You're numb to the world. You have been since 95. Why 90? Let's just do another race. Okay, let's remove the traction advantage for Thomas and do a roll race. All right, roll time. I'm not that confident. That Corvette's got unbelievable gearing. Okay, here we go. Grin off your face. Let's go to the track. To the track. Last time we were on track in this car, Thomas was driving it, but now it's my turn. And yes, the C8 takes this car from a dig on the strip, but that launch control has no power here, Corvette Storm Crow. And 
unlike that Italian copycat thing that Thomas is in, this thing is all Mustang and in its ultimate form because this isn't just a Mustang GT with a supercharger slapped on top of it. It's so much more. Firstly, under the hood is a hand-built 5.2 litre aluminium alloy supercharged and intercooled engine designated Predator. But perhaps more importantly, it has a massively revised setup, which even over the GT350 gives it a new electronic power steering unit and for suspension, it gets lighter coil springs front and rear. <laughs> so easy. Okay, so this thing is a little bit of a working class man in a knockoff Italian suit says Dolce and Banana on the side. But some of the best things are when Italians and Americans come together. Leonardo DiCaprio, Al Pacino, spaghetti and meatballs. Bet you didn't know that wasn't an all-Italian thing. Now, before I really get into uh, this car on the track, a lot of you saw our road test of this, where we showed off the rather horrible understeer. Such understeer. Well, this C8 is in a track alignment setting. From the factory, every Corvette, or every car for that matter, comes with an alignment spec. That is, they set the car up in a certain way so that these tires are tilted in, tilted out, towed in, or towed out. The thing is, though, is that the Corvette has two settings. It has a street alignment and a track alignment. That means these front tires in track alignment spec, which it's in right now, are at negative three degrees of camber. That's a lot, but not just the front has changed, the front and the back have changed about equally. So it should add more grip, but does it change the handling? Now, all mid-engine cars push in the corner. That means they understeer in the middle of the corner because the weight's over the rear. So when you accelerate, that front starts to walk a little bit. And Honestly, I had driven one of these on the track before in track alignment, and I really, really wasn't impressed. But for some reason today, in this car, I am absolutely blown away. But before I get to the handling, let's talk about the rest of the car. As you know, this car is mid-engine. The weight's behind me, so when I get on the throttle, it just hooks up coming out of a corner. And it has a really effective engine. Just a proper Corvette V8. I'm really getting along with this transmission. I like the short gearing. I like that I have to use the paddles a lot to enjoy it. The shifts are really fast. And today is about lap times, so I'm grateful for that. And this one's got the crazy smooth seven-speed Tremec gearbox. And it's phenomenal. You can shift while cornering. And it doesn't even upset the balance of the car. Look how fast these shifts are. I'll have you know that it has an electro-hydraulic shift mechanism using energy-efficient low-leak solenoids. And if anyone can explain to me what that means, I'll be here all week. I'm pretty sure it means that it shifts real nice. <laughs> Here's the thing is that a lot of people have said that on the road alignment anyway, the reason that it understeers is for safety. That's not a thing. Because the C7 was an absolute wild card, especially when you go up to the Z06 levels. It would oversteer with a breath of throttle. And even in like Grand Sport form, it would oversteer like crazy on corner entry. Too much even. So that's not the reason. The reason was is that I think when they first started developing this car, the earlier versions that we drove, it just wasn't quite dialed in. But for some reason, today, in this weather, on this track, with this blue Corvette, this is one of the best handling cars I've ever driven. Mid-engine cars have a tendency to bite you if you get past a certain point. This one isn't doing that. If I want to rotate it, I just turn a little more and use the weight of the engine. And 
the differential doing its thing out back, second gear come through here. So what people accuse of being a boomer cruiser, in track alignment it's just not. Second gear, chuck it in. Thomas is sliding that Corvette around like he's just discovered that he can do it in that, which maybe is true. But this is a Mustang after all, so let's see what she's got. Yeah, she drifts! She makes a better sound than that Corvette. <laughs> I just watched James do a big slide in the GT500. When I met him, he was this little guy in his Miata doing skids around. Look at him, he just drifted a 760 horsepower American pony car. A little bit of understeer, but it's such huge power that you can just throw it into oversteer the moment you touch the throttle. So this looks like a muscle car, but put it on the track and it goes full sports car. Steering feels progressive, and the car bounces around like a muscle car, which is true to its nature, but it grips prodigiously, and you can just plant it out of a corner. Now the Cup 2s and the carbon fiber package give this thing crazy grip, but these PS4Ss, are unbelievable. The steering for me is a downside because while the weight is nice and it's really accurate, there's not much feedback. So it's kind of hard to know exactly where my wheels are pointing, but like I'm figuring it out. No problem. Come through here. Lift off oversteer skid, super easy. Suspension is so compliant. I think this is going to be one of the fastest cars I've ever driven around this track. Now, the one big issue that I have with it still, no matter what you say, yes, right now in track alignment, it oversteers smoothly, predictably, it's lovely. The front end grip is exactly where I want it to be. But the thing is, is that we have three degrees of negative camber in the front. That's like a really aggressive setup. So, Something else needs to be changed so that you can have a reasonable amount of negative camber in the front so you can drive the car every day and then go to the track and not be getting alignment every single time. Because you're gonna wear the inside of your tires out real fast on the road. I can't wait to see what happens in the hot laps because yes, the Corvette is more sports car than this, but it has power, it has grip, it has unbelievable turning. I really think it's gonna be a close one. And I'm not joking. In the time I've been talking to you, I've lost 60 kilometers of range. Okay, it's time for the hot laps. Now, Thomas is gonna do this in true time attack fashion, which means he's only gonna have five laps. And the first is a warm up lap, followed by three hot laps, and then one cool down lap. And that is all he's got. Okay, let's look at the Corvette first. If you watch on corner entry, you can hear that slight judder of mid-engined understeer, which is then followed by a progressive motion to oversteer which makes the Corvette really easy to carry speed through the corners and adjust slip angle. If you couple that with the fact that the power oversteer on exit is smooth and progressive, and the suspension really allows the power to get to the pavement, you end up with a car that is very quick on a tight, bumpy track like ours. Also, if you're wondering why I'm so active on the steering wheel, it's because there isn't much feel from the front end, so I'm constantly trying to suss out the front tire grip levels. Let's watch the lap. you know our leaderboard, which we will put up in a second, you will already know that the C8 laid down a very fast time, but let's watch the GT500. Now this car is a different beast. It puts down monstrous power on the straights, but it's less delicate in the corners. This car was also set up by the dealer for track driving. The GT500 turns in incredibly well, but without cup twos on the front, it sometimes had trouble finding front grip at the limit, as you can hear me expressing here. Hell. Come on. Get some front end out of it, come on. 
It's also a full-on workout around a tight track like this. It's like hanging on to the back of an angry grizzly. It's fantastic. Let's watch the rest of the lab. Put it down. Yes. Good exit. Okay, we've come to that part of the day where it's time to find out how the lap times went. I've been burdened with this information all day and long. I've been, and I've been apprehensive because I, I, there's not a result that wouldn't surprise me. I have no idea what's gonna happen. Oh, I can promise you that's true. This feels like a crazy sports car that's basically borderline supercar. And then this is just a 760 horsepower sledgehammer. <laughs> that's exactly the what it is. It drives incredibly well. No, it does. It's bouncy. It's a bit bouncy. On our track. Is, yeah. This is a rough. The, the, the ride on this is nuts. Do you remember me in the ZL1? Anyway, yes. you guys are dying. <laughs> Sorry, first half of our misery. Then. Okay, here we go. Okay. Okay, I'm going to put from last season. Remember, last season is a bit different than this season. The track is different. It's green this year, whatever. The times can't match up that perfectly. But I'm going to put last season's leaderboard up here. The fastest car we ever had was the Camaro ZL1 1LE. And that was on the Supercar 3R. Tires, Supercar 3R. This is basically this, Cup 2 competitors. Yeah, and this is not on the Cup 2s. Okay. Okay. And that was, what was that? That was like a low 111. Okay. 111.12, I believe. It's up there. The people that are watching know better than I do right now. Okay. Here we go. GT500. 111. 82. Oh, okay. First All of all, right. that's still unbelievably fast. Unbelievable. PS4S's? Okay. Yeah. yeah. On Cup 2s, I'm very confident. What happened with this? Okay, fine. The Corvette did a 1, 11, 53. Oh, okay. All right. How Res crazy is that? Yeah, respect to the Corvette. How crazy is this that? This was incredible. What a transformation from our street review. Oh, completely. On the track alignment, I mean, I have to say it again that this camber setting would not be good for everyday driving. You're going to run out of tire real fast, but out here, on our track, it's just, it's like a ballerina. It just dances through the corners. Congratulations, it, you just made a Corvette feminine. I did, look how pretty it is. That's what they good, mid-engine cars oh, now are now the very... front's pretty. And let me guess, this is blue as well. Anyway, brilliant day. Unbelievable I, cars. I can't believe how close these cars are. When we, when we came up with this, we had no idea they were gonna be this close, and I'm so happy that they are. The wing goes to the Corvette. Which one would you drive home, by the way? You know what, if, <laughs> if this one can't make it home without filling it up three times. That is an issue. So yes. for that reason, I take the Corvette. So would I. But there's just, so oh, you would. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, all right, fair enough. Yeah, Corvette. It's so easy to, everyone dotes on this. Guess what? Bloody brilliant. <laughs>